Welcome, and thanks for joining with AIP, the American Institute of Pyramid Research. We study pyramids around the world, especially in Egypt, with the belief they hold special wisdom. Please subscribe to our channel as we uncover long hidden secrets, explain sacred symbols, and demystify the world's greatest mysteries. Well, thanks for joining. We've got an interesting study for you today. The blueprint of the Great Pyramid, hidden by Hemiunu, the architect, in plain sight. Okay, so Hemiunu's Mastaba, the place where he's buried, is in the western field at Giza, and it encodes the Great Pyramid. Uh, it's been given the designation by Egyptologist G4000, and the Great Pyramid, of course, is called G1. So G4000 yields G1. Manu saves out of the great researcher has this article about how the essential design of the Great Pyramid is encoded by its architect, Hemiunu. Okay, so here's how. This is a diagram by uh, the, the founder of Egyptology, uh, William Flinders Petrie, and he meticulously diagrammed the, uh, basically the width, the height, if you want to say, of all the courses of the Great Pyramid. Okay, so uh, here, here's, here's the map of that. So you can see that there's a peak there, and then it, the, the courses go down for a while. Then there's another peak, and then they go down, and there's another peak. And so that's the pattern that's followed there. So he encoded these uh, different peaks by preceding these peaks with courses whose square area in cubits was a near-even integer ratio of the pyramid's base. Now, that sounds kind of convoluted, but the idea is that you, that you could take the base uh, area of every course, the 203 courses of the Great Pyramid, they all would have an area. Well, some of those areas are ex an almost an exact 1 25th, exact 25th ratio of the base of the Great Pyramid, okay? So, for instance, you know, there's 10 25ths. The, the, the base area of that course right there is 10 25ths of the, the base of the Great Pyramid. That course level, its area is 14 25ths, and that course level right there is 19 25ths. Okay, so the peak courses after the even 25th fractionals are associated with ceilings. Okay, so the pre-peak courses, peak courses are, are these 25th fractionals. So for instance, the 19 25th precedes the possible void chamber shown by the muon scans there. So, uh, Sevzada, uh says we could maybe find some of the, what we think are the hidden chambers in the Great Pyramid, because the known chambers, we have this clue from Hemiunu, why not just extend it to the upper chambers? Okay, interesting. Okay, some more encodings. Uh, take my, my RC work that I did. The American Research Center presentation uh, I gave uh, last month at their virtual, their first virtual uh, annual uh, convention. And just work I've done around Giza. Okay, so uh, I took these pointers on the east side of the Great Pyramid and I showed that they pointed to places in the Great Pyramid itself. So this again seems to be Hemiunu's the designer here that this works because, you know, he's at work here. You've, you've got the angles of these boat pits on the east side that are east-west basically laid out, but they're not exactly east-west because when you follow the pointers, you know, they point to that spot on the southwest Eris uh, angle of the Great Pyramid. So this forms a square because the notch on the northeast side is a very famous part of, of uh, you know, what's at Giza. It's a very visible structure. And then the boat pointers converge that I just showed you there. So that forms a square. A square is plainly formed on the Great Pyramid. Okay, so there's the notch. Okay. And that's the square that, that Hemiunu seems to be pointing us to in the Great Pyramid. Uh, the air shafts of the King's Chamber exit at the 103rd course, according, in the original casing stones, according to Petri's diagrams there. Okay, so the north air shaft exits three royal cubits east of the north-south axis, but it again, it exits on our Great Pyramid Square, and the south King's Chamber air shaft exits 10 royal cubits east of the north-south axis, but again, on this square, look at all the connections to this Great Pyramid Square. But there's more. So there's a line through the, this is uh, the south uh, side of the Great Pyramid, and that's where the uh, air shaft exits right there. Now think in terms of the architecture of the Great Pyramid. In terms of singular changes from like one chamber to another, one passage to another, one of the largest would have to be this one right here. 
okay? You're in the first ascending passage, and then you walk, come into the grand gallery, 28-foot-high ceiling, the sense of the expansive sense you get there. And then all these passages come together, the, the Queen's Chamber passage, the well shaft, the first ascending passage. That would be the singular spot. And guess what? This square, this great pyramid square we're talking about, goes exactly over that spot. So incredible. Now, John Romer writes, the only sign of genuine intention can be the harmonies of angle, form, and size. Okay, so I'd say we're finding that with these boat pits and these inner passages with this great pyramid square. That's intentional. Hemiunu did that. So if Hemiunu could do that with a pyramid square, could there be a tomb connection? Since Saif Sada said, you know, he's done that in other ways, could there be a tomb connection? So uh, I don't know why I picked a uh, distorted picture here because it's plain the Great Pyramid doesn't look square there, but this works in other, other photographs because I've done this before. Uh, so the square is in blue, and so uh, you can see that the boat pointers point to that southwest Eris angle there, the black in black. And notice the white line and the green lines, okay? So there's Hemiunu's tomb, G4000. Look at the north, again, the north side of our Great Pyramid Square points directly west to that mastaba. And the center of the Great Pyramid going directly west is the southern part of Hemiunu's tomb. Wow. And then if you take the uh, southernmost of the two eastern north-south boat pits and put it through that southwest corner of the template, it goes again right to the northwest corner of Hemiunu's tomb. This can't be by chance. So... Hemiunu, I'm standing here. I uh, got permission a couple months ago to go back to his tomb. Incredible what you've left for us here at Giza. You, you've put your stamp. You've shown that you are the author, uh, you know, one of the authors of the Great Pyramid, the great designer, the architect. Because, again, this speaks to the debate about who built the Great Pyramid. You know, Hemiunu was the nephew of Khufu, the builder of the Great Pyramid. He was the grandson of uh, Sneferu, who was Khufu's father. And uh, his tomb is there. We know about him. We've got his statue. He built, he, he's the architect of the Great Pyramid. Okay, but there's more. Let's go to another, uh, this boat pit pointer again. These are the two we've shown that, that point to the southwest, you know, uh, Eris angle corner of our Great Pyramid Square. Okay, so if you just follow that through where it hits the southwest corner, look at that. It goes right to the southwest corner of Hemiunu's tomb. Incredible. Another pointer there. This is way beyond chance. This is, it shows intention. Hemiunu, the architect of the Great Pyramid, is speaking. And then when you calculate the, uh, the size of that course, the, the, the Great Pyramid Square, it's 200 cubits. The 103rd course is two, got sides of 200 cubits. So it's interesting that uh, the derived base uh, of, of that course, the 200 cubits we just talked about, is very nearly the equivalent to the base length of the Menkara Pyramid. So you got 200 cubits on this Great Pyramid Square, and then it seems like, you know, a chip off the old block, Menkara is 200 cubits. Charles Regano writes in the Pyramids of the Giza Plateau, based on Petri's measurements, the architects intended a pyramid of base length 200 cubits. And uh, Lehner, Mark Lehner, says that the length of one of the base sides of Menkara is 200 royal cubits. Now, uh, it's said that uh, the Menkara's pyramid is not a perfect square. It's a little slightly rectangular, so that's why we're just saying one of the sides is 200 cubits. But it's very close to a 200 cubit square. So I want to rename what I'm calling the Great Pyramid Square, the Great Pyramid Square. I'm calling it the Hemiunu Template. Okay, well, this is the end of part one. We're going to put part two out right away, so if you enjoyed this, you can keep watching. Thanks for hanging with us. Please subscribe and comment below. Thank you.